Welcome again. We are with Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, which includes such places as where we are now, Church Key and downstairs Birch and Barley, also Rustico, two locations in Alexandria and Boston. Um, before we get to the beer of the week, there's some exciting beer news taking place, not, I don't think, in D.C., but very close to D.C., about a beer called Pliny the Younger. So, yes, Pliny <laughs> the Younger. Um, you're, you're not the first to ask about this uh, this time of year. Pliny the Younger is an exceptional sort of triple IPA. Um, so, you know, we have hoppy IPAs, then there's the imperial version. It's going to have more hops, uh, more alcohol, uh, really, really fragrant, aromatic. And then a triple IPA takes it to the next level, like three times as much hops as you'd use in a, in a, as a regular IPA. Russian River Brewing Company is one of these cult breweries out in uh, Santa Rosa, California. Uh, Vinny Salerza is the, is the owner there and the brewmaster, and he's often credited with crafting the first double IPA called Blind Pig way back when, uh, 1994. He then crafted another imperial IPA or double IPA in 2000 called Pliny the Elder, and then more recently has crafted a triple IPA called Pliny the Younger. Now, Pliny the Younger is uh, an incredibly expensive beer to make. It sits in the tanks for a long time, tons of hops added to it, so they really don't make that much of it. And the first Friday of each February, they do the release at the, the brew pub out in California. Uh, and you know, you have the lines around the block and everything. And then they have very limited distribution of some kegs, it's draft only, uh, because IPAs, hoppy beers are amazing when they're fresh on draft. Um, draft only in the area, and now a little bit coming out eastward. Unfortunately, Russian River is not available in DC, uh, but it is available in Philadelphia. Uh, in, on March 5th, in fact, uh, Monk's Cafe, one of the original beer bars in the U.S., just a fantastic place, will be pouring Pliny the Younger on draft. So if you have uh, a moment on Monday and you wanted to go up there and wait in uh, a really long line and taste one of the most amazing beers out there, um, go for it because it's, okay. it's outstanding. Yeah, Google Pliny the Younger, Philadelphia, and there's some other bars that will have it. Yeah, too. there's other yeah. bars as well, yeah. Uh, you and I have talked about this before, briefly, before we get to uh, the beer of the week. Um, a lot of hype surrounding certain beers, uh, and can it leave you disappointed? Or I mean, if you you build up so much hope that this is going to be so great, you wait in line for two hours and then let down. But right. it, not with this beer, though. I don't think so. Um, you know, it's all about your expectations. I, I, I just, I guess, I would say that if you're willing to to chase after beers of any kind, and and you're willing to wait in line for them or pay expensive prices for them. Just to don't let that ruin the experience and don't let yourself be underwhelmed by what you get for it. Just remember that it's the same beer whether you're drinking it with no line or really cheaply or at a certain bar or if you have to wait in line uh, someplace else. That the beer doesn't change and I think that you know, just be grounded and, and, and enjoy it for what it is. Uh, don't take it too seriously, but give it the credit that uh, these, these wonderful beers deserve. Okay, now uh, each time in the past 12 weeks, I've, I realize I've been saying what's on tap this week, and we're always drinking out of a bottle. Yeah. But I'm going to keep saying what's on tap this week. So what's on tap this week? Well, uh, this week we have uh, another kind of inimitable, amazing hoppy beer that comes out in February, just like you know, Hop Slam did as well. Um, and it's, it's sought after um, in a similar manner, maybe not quite as intensely as Pliny the Younger or Hop Slam, but it's every bit as good a beer, and it's called Nugget Nectar. It's from Trogues Brewing Company up in uh, Pennsylvania, and they've been making it for a few years now, and it is absolutely stunning. What they've done with this beer is they take the, uh, the base recipe of Hopback Amber, which is one of their flagships, um, and then they just kind of amp it up. So it's a 7.5% super hoppy kind of um, imperial amber or American IPA. And what's notable is that it has more of a, um, a malt body to it than, mm. say, um, some of these other imperial IPAs do. So color. on the uh, yeah, beautiful color, uh, like, you know, kind of a, a light amber. But there's some residual malt character here that's going to balance it. It's not as bitter as a lot of uh, strong hoppy beers are. And uh, the nugget in the name is referring to the nugget hop. It's one of the most prized uh, Pacific Northwest American hops. It's a big, big, huge bitter hop, but it's also got wonderful tropical fruit, floral, um, slightly piney herbal notes, very complex, and they use it uh, three ways in this beer. They dump it in during the boil for bitterness along with other hops. After the boil, um, it goes into a chamber called the hop back. And then they add whole cone nugget hops in there, which extracts beautiful aroma and less bitterness. And then after um, fermentation, they condition the beer, 
adding more hops again, dry hopping it for even more aroma. The later we add the hops, the more aroma we'll get. So that's why this beer has a beautiful balance to it and just screams uh, hops in the nose. Always happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really it's long nice. finish. Yeah. Lingers, but balanced, earthy. I mean, it says right here, Hop Heads Nirvana. I mean, what more do you uh, Absolutely. need to know? What do you pair this with? Well, actually, you know, it's funny. I think I've talked in the past about the, the difficulties, the kind of Achilles heel of beer pairing is bitterness. Um, and IPAs and, and hoppy ambers can be problematic with that. But if you have enough rich protein to stand up, we're all good. And uh, what I like here is because of that kind of bright tropical fruit and citrus, but also the sweetness, I love this with um, barbecue. Uh, with like, but with rich barbecue, like barbecued ribs and things like that, with a kind of a more a sweeter barbecue sauce, not too uh, acidic, because bitterness and acid will will clash. But if you have some some sweet barbecue ribs, um, absolutely love it with this uh, with this beer. One thing uh, you see this a lot, and some people may not know, as they as they learn more about beer, uh, the internet, the the bittering units. This says ninety three ish. IBUs. So usually it's just one solid number. Right, yeah. I think um, IBU is just a, a measurement of, of the bittering uh, components in the beer. Uh, however, uh, we, the, people hypothesize that humans can't really taste much above 90. So it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. But what it does indicate is that there's a lot of hops in there. And, and with a lot of bitterness from hops comes a lot of flavor and aroma. So you know you're going to have um, uh, incredible aromatic experience, even if it doesn't taste um, any more bitter than a, a one that has 90-ish IBUs or something like that. Okay. Want to mention congratulations on being nominated for a James Beard Award this Thank year you. for Thank Outstanding you. Wine and Spirits Professional. We're going to talk with you a little more at length about that in a couple weeks. So uh, thanks again as always. My pleasure. And I'm Brendan Hazelton. Be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.